Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. It's been a while since I've talked about this series here, so I thought I would mix this one in here while I'm continuing to wrap up your ghost and spirits suggestions. This one actually has to do not with a suggestion from someone here, but rather an article, something that I read on my Google News app a couple of months back. And it got me interested in this case, and I thought I would showcase that information here. The article was essentially talking about some remains that were found that could have a link to this disappearance. The only problem is considering the timeline involved as far as the testing of those remains and the timeline associated with the article now being several months old. There may not be another full update, at least for now. But in the very least, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this disappearance. In fact, you're looking at the picture of the young boy here. I'll provide as much information possible. And then the update that I read a couple of months back. His name is Jose Esuaro Dominguez, but he had a nickname that he went by that was called Chip. So let's go ahead and let's talk about his disappearance here. And again, stick towards the end, you'll hear that update associated with the article I was reading. So here's what happened. Jose Esuaro Che Dominguez was originally born on July 16th, 1965. He grew up there in California, and it looks like he ended up staying for a while at a place called Stockton, California. Some of you that are locals there, let me know if you remember any information associated with news if this was a sensational story something along those lines with regards to his disappearance it's a slim chance because it looks like the disappearance date actually occurred august 2nd 1981 so a little over 40 years now but it's still considered an active case at the time of his disappearance he was 16 years old so here's essentially what happened on august 2nd 1981 he was leaving his home there in Stockton, California, and at the time he was going to meet two friends over at a location called Stribley Park. More on that here in a minute when it comes to those two friends, by the way. So he was going to meet them there, and as it happens, it happened to be a, a local location. So in other words, very nearby his spot as well. The last time he was seen, he was wearing these gray corduroy pants tennis shoes that were also colored gray and most distinctly he had a black shirt on a t-shirt that had the name Che on it and then it had a cancer zodiac sign I think this played an important part because later on there were some more reports associated with people seeing him more on that here in just a moment too but yes he left home to go there I don't have the time period so I don't know if it was let's say in the morning or in the afternoon but the idea is he left and then he was never ever seen again this was strange and unusual because him being a high school student at the time in fact he was going to a school that was called Franklin High School he played there in the jazz band he was a trumpet player he was also a wrestler People stated that he was the kind of person that would not just do this type of disappearance, even though it was said afterward, and probably the police and other type of law enforcement just have to consider this always, that he purposely disappeared, like in other words, he was a runaway. The fact that he never made contact with his family, especially during the holiday period or during his birthday, that was very unusual for him. That gives you an idea that he was someone that may have been even uh, more of an isolationist or someone that wasn't necessarily just outgoing, but at the same time, he wasn't just someone that would just outright disappear. He wanted to be able to be seen at least sporadically, if not multiple times. But yeah, he apparently left his home there from Stockton, California, and then he was never seen again. Obviously, there was a search done. There was uh, any type of investigation to try to find his location, see where he went. It was actually discovered that the two friends that he was on his way to meet, no names associated with them. It gave me the idea that they were minors at the time, which is why a lot of that stuff information 
remains hidden. Anyone that's um, under 18, a lot of the info for protection purposes is not reported online anywhere, even to news outlets. But yeah, those two friends were actually arrested. They were arrested. Um, it, it looks like it was uh, eight years later. So maybe they took a little bit longer than usual for the uh, law enforcement and others to try to gather some evidence, but they eventually arrested them. But as it turns out, there was no body. And by that point, eight years later, they still, law enforcement and others had not found Chet within any of the locations that they were hounding. And on top of that, no evidence, very little to none when it comes to linking those two friends to his arrest. And so all those charges linked to those two friends were gone. So closest we have when it comes to having any kind of tie to something involving his disappearance as to who caused it is apparently those two friends that were with him. It was enough that police were able to arrest someone, but eventually the courts decided no, even the prosecutors and judge said they just didn't have enough evidence to consider it a case that either they could proceed with or win. And so all charges were dropped. I imagine that's got to be like a gut punch to the family because on their end, here they have something that could potentially be something along the lines of a finality. Obviously, eight years later and now going 40 years later, there's still, as I mentioned earlier, an active case status associated with it. But here there was maybe going to be something, some kind of final word when it came to who caused his disappearance, but there's nothing else associated with it, nothing else in terms of evidence, nothing else in terms of the body pointing towards more evidence. So in that case, that's when that only link had to be dropped in. Who knows what happened to those two friends or if there's been other evidence tied to them, but it looks like it hasn't to this very day. There's even a Facebook page associated with the disappearance as well. And there's a listing from the FBI, $5,000 reward. So that way, if any information is found linked to the disappearance or information about finding him and so on, then that's where um, it's $5,000. And then Crime Stoppers, the Stockton Crime Stoppers, has their own investigation uh, reward of $10,000 in that case. But now as far as the update that I was mentioning earlier, it turns out that quote-unquote partial human remains have been recovered from an East County location. And this is connected to the case as tied to the disappearance of Che. So it's a little loose when it comes to that info, but authorities have stated that these partial human remains could be linked and that they're being tested to see if more evidence can be tied to the disappearance of Che. The only problem, though, is this. At the time when I was reading the information associated with that update, that was December of last year. The article was stating that it takes several weeks for that type of information, the testing to come up with some results. Obviously, we're well past that time period now, so I don't think anything came about from it. Or who knows, maybe the uh, investigators, whoever's doing this, uh, and it is, this case is apparently also part of another unit, one that looks at cold cases, but that are the closest ones to being solved, almost like on an active status slash hot case. And they're the ones that are still doing this. Maybe they are working on something else in the background that could lead to key witnesses or something along those lines. In fact, you know, one thing I wanted to mention too, the 1989 arrest was also dropped because a key witness who uh, may have been part of those two boys that were arrested or uh, may have been uh, someone else completely different, they in turn ended up recanting their story. And so that ended up also dropping those charges against those two boys. So maybe now more evidence is being gathered behind the scenes with this uh, evidence that was found, this partial human remains. And then maybe in the near future, there's going to be something else tied to finally solving what happened to uh, Chet with regards to his disappearance. Sad situation all around. Again, we're talking about something that is 40 plus years old. Still active though, still heavily being looked at, still evidence obviously still being gathered. So 
Hopefully sometime in the future, there's going to be another update, maybe the best news possible where he's found somewhere alive. Maybe he truly was just a runaway or maybe something else happened that was more nefarious. But anything as far as any updates on that, that happens, then I'll talk about that more here in the future. All right, everybody. If anybody has any more info, especially on the local level again, then please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.